pain in the dick, I'm sure. <clears throat> Speaking of pains in the dick, comes Ashley, we are. Yo. Mike. I am Cody. Welcome to this week's episode, everybody. Um, so, Joe, did you watch Hamilton? <laughs> nope, I didn't. I knew that answer beforehand. You guys continue to talk about it amongst yourselves. Well, we, well, we can't really spoil anything. What, does I he know how history. how he died? <gasps> oh, I'm sorry, Joe, he died. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's not currently living. He's not currently alive. <laughs> <laughs> back he, net of them are. Um, it does go back to the fact that like I know I learned about all of it but like I also didn't retain enough of it you know what I mean like I knew what he did and I know who he was but I didn't know like any of the shit he went through the fact that he was an orphan um, and things like that like I didn't know any of that shit I was like oh I thought he was just a rich white guy I did not know he was a uh well, look at anything like Lynn Manuel Miranda, but um not to I mean not to really go like spoiler, whatever, right? Um the big thing that not not to tell you they killed a pet snake or anything, but yeah, we're fuck just off, gonna right? kinda dance around some <laughs> Hey, where can I watch season two at? Uh Hulu. Is it on Hulu? I finished season one today. Of Tacoma? Yeah. It's on uh, True TV. Yeah, but I don't. I mean, that means I have to look it up and find out where it's at. But if it's on Hulu, I can watch it on Hulu. I watched it. Well, yeah, Direct TV is probably on demand. Oh. Yeah, they're on demand. Sucks balls now, though. Uh uh-huh. Like, well, like, so speaking of which, I was gonna watch that um, the uh, Last Dance documentary series, right? Word. So I was like, oh, I'll just set it to record, right? Um, but like it didn't record like as it was trying to like pull the on-demand stuff but they only had episode one and three on there that's weird so i was like wait i can record the last two episodes of it but i can't let it doesn't have the rest of them for them to download except for one and three so i was like well i guess i'm waiting until this month to watch it on netflix which i still haven't done well it actually comes out what's that Tomorrow? Saturday? Mike, when's it come out? This week? Right? On Netflix, yeah. Yeah. Sometime this week. I want to say it's like Saturday or something. It's weird like that. It's like a it's like the eighteenth or something weird. But anyways, Hamilton. Um not to go over a crazy amount. Again, not to spoil it for Joe. Um the production value of the film diversion. Um, was stupendous. Like I didn't know what to expect. Like I haven't, I haven't watched a recorded broadcast of a play in a long time. But when I've you never, do, it's usually one I've of those seen, like fixed cameras, you know, and it holds, shows the whole stage. Yeah, but this was like multiple camera angles. From what looked to be cranes, I guess. Yeah, so I actually looked this up. They they filmed it and edited it together over three performances. That doesn't two, okay makes sense. Two separate live performances and one empty performances. So you actually get shots on stage yeah. where the cameras are weaving in and out of the performers. They did that in an empty empty uh, theater. Oh, I thought they were more clever. I thought they just had people dressed like. Fucking old timey people. See, I, was, a camera I somewhere. was that first stage shot that they did yeah. during um, uh, Alexander the the, the main song, title song. Yeah. song. I was like, are they really <laughs> weaving cameramen in and out? So I was watching closely. I was all like, I'm gonna find a cameraman somewhere in I'm the background. I'm gonna expose these motherfuckers. Um, I couldn't find one. Turns out, like they did that. So like the the cool close ups and stuff like that are all actually done with nobody in the. Uh, in the theater, but they went full tilt. They did the whole performance, that third one with nobody in it. And, and literally like the camera people had to like, they, they had to get familiar with the choreography. So they knew where to be, to be out of the way. And then like, they couldn't go past a certain point on the stage. 
because then you would have been in other people's shots. So they all had areas where they had to like float around in and, and stay in and then back up and drop off stage for certain shots. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was, uh, that part of it was pretty, pretty dope. Um, but, uh, the one thing that really got me was like, impressed me a lot was the, the setup of the stage with the spinning, the rotating floor yeah. areas. Cause they have this, it looked like it was two pieces, right? Yeah. So it was, it would, uh, a, a, essentially a giant turntable in the middle of their, their stage and it was separated so they had a middle piece and an outer piece to it and they would spin independently of each other so certain times during the show like the middle one would go counterclockwise the other one would go clockwise and vice versa and sometimes the middle one would spin slowly and the other one would spin fast depending on what they're trying to get across during the story of the play it was pretty neat yeah it was made from really interesting like the dual scene the first duel scene you see between uh, uh, Alexander Hamilton Jr. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Or no, I'm sorry, not even that one. It was the first one was with... Uh, the French, or not the French guy. Um, what the hell is that guy's name? The guy ended up playing Alexander Hamilton Jr. Not, Jr. Yeah. as well. I um, can't think of his name right now, but that one that was That also cool. threw me off too, because I, I know they do that in plays, but uh, I was, I was, there was like a couple times where I was kind of confused, because most of the uh, performers played different roles yeah different parts of the thing and i i remembered a lot of uh the v digs like like everyone was talking about him it was like lin manuel miranda and him yeah and when they popped up and he originally played the french guy lafayette and i was all like like well, he's fucking killing it as lafayette but i don't understand why everyone was like out of their minds about how good this guy was because like yeah. the Lafayette role was a really a, like it's a a decent role, but it was pretty bit compared to some of the other ones. But then he comes back and he actually plays uh, Thomas Jefferson later on in the play, in the second part of the play. Oh, and he steals, the and he show. fucking murders it, dude. Like he is, it's it's crazy. Like I just remember thinking, watching it, I was like, how are like all of these people not the most famous people in the world right now? And then I was like, well, I guess a lot of them are. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're just not in the circles that I watch. So, but yeah, they're they're all just insanely fucking talented. And the other thing that, because uh, I've never seen a filmed stage performance before, I've seen movie versions of Broadway plays. Yeah, but I've never seen like the actual stage production of a of a play of a Broadway play, a big popular play. Anyway, at least not at like a professional level one. I've seen like smaller amateur ones and stuff, but. Um, I was blown away at the amount of like, like detailed acting that they do. Like in terms of, of like facial expressions and interactions and stuff. Cause like in my head, I'm like, you're playing so far away from the, the audience. I wasn't expecting to see that, but like, they're really like movie level acting the entire time, but also having to present themselves for people who are, you know, a hundred feet away from them for the people in the back. It was insane. Um, yeah, I was like, this is weird. Do I like Broadway plays now? And I was like, or is this just the best one? And they all are going to suck in comparison. Cause I'm not sure how this works now. I mean, there's some that are really good. This one was extremely well done and it was, uh, and the crazy thing about it too is like, it's just shy of three hours, right? I think yeah, it was two, I think the actual runtime was like two thirty nine or two forty something like that. Yeah, but they actually put an intermission in. <laughs> yeah, so they give you like a two minute, two or three minute intermission. And I was like, well, that gives me a chance to pee. Yeah. Um, so but what yeah. does this uh, cover? So the opening song actually covers him, covers his story essentially. Yeah. Um, up until coming to America, or. He's coming know, to America. Yeah, Eddie Murphy shows yeah. up. Yeah, it was a, Eddie Murphy shows up and he plays all the roles. I think you it, watched the wrong one, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it it covers up up until like what nineteen or something like that when he when he gets there to go to university. Yeah. So basically, 
they give you the first song. It tells you his his history, where he came from, and then he's literally in New York, getting ready to, to well try to go to college. Yeah, so it it covers that when he first gets there, um, and then the the play picks up on like the major storylines is the Revolutionary War, um, the forming the, of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, forming of the Declaration and and you know, the first presidency and then his, his affair, his kid dying. And then, um, in in endorsing Thomas Jefferson for president, which they were like, apparently not friendly with each other, but, uh, he really didn't believe in Aaron Burr at all. <laughs> so, yeah, he, so uh, him and him and endorsing Thomas Jefferson was essentially, um, and I, I haven't looked it up to see how much of a difference it made in like real life or if it was kind of overplayed for the sake of the show. But in the show, they played it like like it was a 50-50 race until uh, Hamilton kind of openly endor- endorsed Thomas Jefferson. And everyone knew that they didn't like each other. So they knew that like, well, with his endorsement of Jefferson, like this other guy must be a real piece of shit. <laughs> um and then with his uh, ultimate death, essentially. But those are like okay. the major plot points going forward. Okay. Definitely sounds interesting. It's and it's insane. Um, if you just take away the the uh, this this is the most unoriginal uh, conversation I'm having here is, is saying that Hamilton was really good because. <laughs> <laughs> like, like everyone's been saying it for fucking five years now um but just musically speaking like it's insane the performances and like i knew i actually became a fan of Lin Manuel miranda because of he did the music for moana and yeah. i was blown away by the music in moana so much so that i actually like downloaded the soundtrack and i listen to it like by myself in my car and shit on the way to work like a fucking nerd and i was like man this guy's really good fucking nerd. and then uh <laughs> and then uh he he basically did straight hip-hop show like it was a rap concert the whole time yeah and he is an amazing performer it's ridiculous to know that he he is he essentially wrote the whole thing like he had help here and there you know to like clean stuff up but he wrote but the, the he wrote the the based on a book by a dude. Yeah. But he wrote all the music. That's the craziest part. And and there's a there's a cool video that I tagged Cody in on Twitter. I don't like that guy anymore. Going around where he um he's explaining the thought process as to how different characters in the show perform and why it was important for them to perform a certain way. And so you had like old school hip hop guys and like Hamilton was always a faster, a little bit more clever, a little bit more of a modern day hip hop guy because he wanted to like enforce the ideal that Hamilton was so much smarter and and he was thinking more of the future than anybody else was. And everyone else, their big plans were very singular, like very one thing that they were looking to get done. And that was what they're working on. Hamilton was trying to work on every little thing and and he really made it made a point to show that just in the performances alone it's so insane dude like it's it's so hard to explain like you really again the most unoriginal fucking thing i've ever said but it's it's really worth watching um and you'll be blown away by just lyrically how he fucking gets a clear concise message across in a 100% hip hop form and it it it's fucking dope dude interesting so i didn't even know that uh, so it's not even classical singing not even no it's... there's one song there's bits of them that have yeah. it but most part it's most of it's all rhyming yeah and in and, and even the songs that go very kind of traditional musical and melody driven uh, they usually intro and outro with like a hip hop vibe to them, uh, and then they they slow it down to give you like the mood of the story to kind of like let you know what's going on. So when it's sad, 
or something really bad happened or someone's super pissed off, you know, like they, they'll change the melody around. So you, the music kind of lets you know what's going on before the lyrics do. Uh, but yeah, there's some, there's some amazing singing in it too, but it's mostly, it, I would say it's like probably what 90% rap. Yeah. Hmm. Cause there's yeah. a lot of it that's, that's very close to like a spoken word poem. You know what I mean? Like no. that, that just doesn't, it has like, background music but it's not to a beat where a lot of but a majority of it is to a beat it's very interesting it's just i mean it's extremely well done um and the this like mike was saying the stage performance alone is way more like developed than you would think it was and i think it has to do with like they're i mean they're real actors like there's a lot of notable actors on there you're like oh i think i've seen this person before like when I saw fucking Jonathan Groff as King George, I was like, "What? Why is why why is Kristoff from Frozen the King of England?" Yeah. But it's it the it's it's the intensity is what I is the word I'm trying to look for. The intensity in the performances really just goes beyond just singing a song on stage. You know what I mean? To Mike's point, is like it's like they're. They're performing, and again, we I don't know if this was for these performances to capture them on camera, or that's how they did all of them, but they were like very powerful performances, and I was like, wow, this is this is insane. But, I mean, I can't imagine what it'd be. It's a spectacle to watch, because like, unlike a movie, where like you have a scene with these people in it, and that's all you can see, the whole stage is still visible to anybody who in the crowd. And there's a lot of those big open shots where the whole thing's in focus if it needs to be. And everybody everywhere on stage is doing something and it all has, it's not wasted motion. It's like they're even moving uh, props around to set up the next scene as it's transitioning. It's like, yeah. you'll see someone dance in <laughs> with a chair and they set it down. All of a sudden you see two guys come in pirouetting with a table and it sets down and it's all of a sudden a desk that, that Alexander Hamilton sits down and starts writing on. So everything yeah, that they're doing the, is functional. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Ev- ev- there's no wasted movement in it at all. And they, um, I saw another thing too, where they, they talked about uh, words per minute. Like someone jot down the words per minute and, and they compared it to other popular Broadway plays. And so, like we said, the runtime is somewhere around two hours and 40 minutes. Um, if it was sung at a pace that most Broadway plays are sung at, the show would have been almost five hours. Wow. And so it gives you an idea of how fast paced everything is yeah. and and how absolute precise. And it's cool too because the uh the set changes as well. Like as the story progresses, the set gets more and more developed and and uh it kind of matches the times a little bit better too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, because they use it for, they have a, a, a like a catwalk above that's part of the stage that a lot of the, when they're transitioning things down below, they'll spotlight someone on there doing a monologue or whatever, and they're talking about it. And then below, you can see them moving pieces in and out. So they went from like this, because it was crazy. It's like one of the first scenes where you have Hamilton meets most of the main characters is in a bar, and there's these full-on tables with chairs set up there. And then when it transitions away from that, they those don't leave the stage. They just go around in the background. But you don't see it okay. through the camera angle be, or the camera because now they're focusing on someone in the spotlight up on the on the catwalk do, transitioning to the next scene while everyone's moving around underneath. And it's like there's none of those like you see a guy on stage or, or a lady on stage dressed in all black that's supposed to be hidden. They're all in costume. Right. And they're all singing okay. and all dancing and everything like that, but they're moving in transitioning scenes. It's really crazy, very very well done. Because there's no there's no stoppage. You know what I mean? There's no like, hey, this scene's yeah. over. Yeah, you're not uh, drawing the curtains and and changing yeah. things out. And, it just transitions and seamlessly back, back and forth. That's crazy. It probably helps with keeping everything on pace for a three almost three hour turn. You know. 
time. Yeah, for sure. Making it. Uh, obviously, if you did it more classically with singing, like Mike said, you're probably looking at five hours, but with scene transitions and stuff like that, you may be looking at longer. That's cool. Uh, so if you guys had to do the classic thing that we do, the what three things you liked about it and one thing that you were surprised about, what would that be? Cody, I'll let you go first. Um, <laughs> so I will go first. Uh, so the three things I liked, um, I mean, I, I love the production value. Um, and it's, I mean, I've seen pictures from it, so it's not like I was like, that was surprising me. I just thought, for the movie, they would do like a little less, you know, because having it just on camera, but the multiple cameras and, and transitioning and editing was just, was terrific. And it really helps it kind of immerse yourself into it more than just see, seeing a, a, the stage the entire time with people moving around. Um, the second thing I liked was the, uh, the pacing was phenomenal. Like it was just, there was none, like I said earlier, there's no, lull in it you go from one one thing to the other and as you're moving from one character's monologue about this to transition to another one that person ends up fading into the background due to the fact they just dim the lights on that person on that part of the stage and all of a sudden the lights come up the other part and the song the, the, the next person continues over and a lot of the times the songs literally transition into a completely different song from the one before it so there's none of this like, oh, he's done. He or she's going to start now. It's literally just transitions right into it and keeps going and going and going. The third thing I liked was um, the performances were amazing from everybody. Uh, Acting-wise, the music, everything was was amazing. The thing that surprised me, though, um, was the the largeness of it. Like the how, like I didn't know again. I didn't pay attention to what it was going to be about other than Alexander Hamilton, but the scope of it and how much they went into his entire life is what surprised me. I thought it was gonna be like, Oh, it's just about, you know, maybe three sections of his life. And it really was, but it was completely detailed and into what it was going. Obviously they didn't do a whole biopic of everything that happened. And they, they mentioned his nine kids or whatever he had. Um, but this, this, flow of his career and how there were people who were jealous of him. There's people who hated him. There's people who loathed everything about his being and, and things like that. But it was just surprising how well the story worked as a musical, not even being just like a hip hop musical, but like just a musical in general, I would have never like a genius thought of the fact of making Hamilton story a musical. You know what I mean? Like I never, if you ever said Hamilton, I'd be like, well, that'd make a good musical. Like how the fuck's that's gonna is that gonna work out? Well, not not only would that make a good musical, but that would make a great hip hop. Production. Yeah, you know, like it makes <laughs> like, it makes no sense, but it's surprisingly amazing, well, well, well done, and it's one of those things where like I have this thing that happens to me every now and then. I'm watching something or listening to something or what or what or reading something where I get like goosebumps, like I get full body goosebumps at one point, and it happened to me almost instantly in this where you can see the 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 time and effort and love put into it. And I don't know why Lynn Manuel picked Alexander Hamilton of any reason. I don't know the history of that or why he picked it, but it's just the passion poured into it. And just like that opening song of, um, of Alexander Hamilton and, and talking about, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to miss my shot and things like that. It's just, I was like, Oh, this is, this is why everyone loves this fucking, this performance. Cause it's, start off with the Eminem song pretty close yeah like it's <laughs> that's what it feels like because it was yeah it was his uh lose yourself yeah for sure lose yourself, that's what I'm trying to think yeah. yeah and it, it's literally that because he's talking about how he will do whatever it takes to get what he where he wants to be and he does and that's exactly what it is and I, I mean like I said I'm no history buff um but uh it just it doesn't like it's one of those things where like they don't paint the prettiest pictures of anybody in this. Um, and they, they show, they talk about people's faults and they, like Mike said, they talk about his affair and the fact that like he was in a way, a good person, but also just kind of a shit bird as well, you know, and not in like not painted as 100% the hero. Yeah, the exactly. Story. No, no, definitely. 
Not not so much painted as a bad guy, but definitely a, a cocky, arrogant guy. A human. Which which rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Very very much human. And he's not yeah. that he's not that crystal clear, you know, um lantern of, of in the darkness. He was like he was shady as fuck. And then he was the nice thing the crazy thing about it is like at one point they lead you that way, like he's a fucking villain. And then he comes back and says, No, 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 no. I have done bad things. I'll admit I've done bad things. I will prove to you I've done bad things. But the bad thing you're trying to make me out to do, I didn't do. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. So that's cool. It made me kind of feel dumb in a way because I'm like, shouldn't I know more about Alex and Hamilton because I live in this country? And like, well, I mean, we went to public school. So it's very true. And I don't think I took any history really in in, uh, college. So. I didn't even think of college as an option. That's how dumb I am. I was all like, there's college? What? Uh, Is that where all those movie uh, <laughs> comedies happen? Yeah. Um, Mike, go ahead. Oh, and by the way, double thumbs up. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm going to watch it again. I, I just haven't decided when. I was, I was going to actually watch it uh, today, but we ran out of time. Um, I liked it a lot. It, it, was, it was insane. Yeah, a little bit. And uh <laughs> they were fucking <laughs> And then um no, I really really liked it. It was and I was I was afraid of it being like like whatever cuz people talk about it like it's the greatest thing that's ever been fucking made. Yeah. And I was like, well, it like for be. a Broadway play. Like it like I kept thinking that like for a Broadway play, which I am not fucking I'm not up on all my Broadway play knowledge. You know what I mean? Like I don't have a lot of background in any of that shit. So, and right. I've been very interested in this cause I knew they filmed one and I knew for a while it was supposed to come out next year at some point. And October because 15th, of the pandemic thing and October 15th, Disney. 2021. Yeah. So like I was excited to see it at some point. I was like, I'm definitely going to watch it. Cause like I actually tried to get uh, tickets to a touring production of it. Uh, not realizing like even the touring productions, the, the touring team, that shit's gone instantly as soon as they go on sale. Yeah. Um. So I was like, oh shit, that made me realize like, okay, well maybe there's a little bit more to this than just like Broadway people really liking it. Snooties. Um, and then I d- I didn't even realize like how many Hamilton references there's been because I wasn't familiar with the play. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of Hamilton stuff out there that I had no fucking clue was a Hamilton reference until I watched it. So that was pretty cool. Um, but my favorite things about it was, one, uh, the biggest thing was uh, the writing. on Like, how it's put together lyrically is is up there with, like, Jay-Z, Eminem, uh, Common, like, like, the, like, the greats. Like, wow. like all-time great hip-hop. Like... He tells a story and gets a point across in such a a small amount of dialogue and window, and it's perfectly fucking makes sense. Like, there's nothing confusing about it. You know what I mean? And I kind of understand because I have read people who like, like people who not into hip hop have talked about like needing to watch it a second time because they're not used to listening. For hip hop, because it's so fast, or having to listen to the soundtrack just to pick up on little things. But like we've all been listening to rap our whole lives, so you can't have a like, ear for it. And I was like, "Holy shit, this guy is like, if he just wanted to be a rapper, he'd be a great rapper." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and there's not even like, "Oh, he's good for a bro-. no." He would be one of the best right now if he wanted to be that. Um, so that was my favorite thing about it. Um, the the scope of the story is the other thing is again i didn't know exactly what it was going to cover in my head i thought it was just going to cover the revolutionary war because i knew he's washington's right hand man and i was all like that'll be the whole play like going to college going to war and coming home like i and i figured they cover his death somehow you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um because in my head like broadway plays you only got three hours you only got four hours whatever it is like you can't tell all that story in four hours unless you're well genius. turns out if you make it a hip uh, a rap fucking thing and you get to the fucking point you can tell a lot of story in 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 three hours 
Uh, so that was that was really cool. And then my other favorite thing was, like I mentioned earlier, the uh, the actual acting in it. Like, because I've like I said, I've seen Broadway plays turned theatrical movies, and you get the performances and stuff, but. Like you're able to do multiple shots, you're able to edit, you're able to, you know what I mean? I know there's some editing in this because it was three over shows, but like you're not you're not delivering a line fifty times and getting the best one out of it. So the fact that it was performed so well, what you get one fucking take? Like that's yeah. the crazy part. <laughs> yeah, it's so not like a, oh, hold on, detail wise and facial expressions and. Little things like like posture and and the way they walked and the way they carried themselves and the way they like all that was just something that I wasn't expecting from an actual stage production. Um, and it was easily my one of my favorite things about it. The thing that surprised me the most was honestly just the fact that it lived up to the hype. Like again, I was like, it should be good, but like it can't be as good as people are saying. Because those people are theater people. Those, you know, people that are into that kind of shit. And after I got done watching it, I was like, I like, I couldn't understand how they did such a good job. It's If that was a movie, it'd be like my favorite movie of the year. You know what I mean? Because it's, there's, it, it was just amazing. And it, like, again, it's the most unoriginal fucking take to have on the most popular thing in the last five years in this world. But it, it truly lives up to all the hype. It's, it's insane. So it's a good point though, is that, uh, uh, do you think it would do better if it was made into an actual movie rather than a, a play or do no. you think it would hurt it? I think it would hurt it. Um, because I, I think, and I haven't really given it a lot of thought, but I think because it is a hip hop thing that they're, <clears throat> Like rap is, is, is like, let me get my story out in words. Like that's what rap is. And, and music is that, but rap, especially rap is, is, is based off of, I'm telling you my story the only way I know how to tell it. And that's how it was formed. And like, not, I feel like there's like a grittiness to it that if you go full production and, I think you're going to lean more on acting and, uh, you know, scenic shots and, and, you know, the production of what goes into making it a film. And that film's not going to be the same runtime. Like, are you putting stuff in to explain stuff that you're not adding? You know what I mean? Like, there's just something about this. Like, this is the classic, you know, the book is better kind of thing like like this is how it's presented i i don't see a way where it could be not only improved on but even up to par with it presented in any other way because there's there's it's just so perfectly put together that you go film with it it's like you people you know that classic people saying like you know, Ender's game, people are like, well, they left out so much. And you know what right, I mean? Right. It's, it's going to be like that. If you do that, like, it'll be a good movie, but you have it now. And there's like, it's available. Just watch that. It's not going to be improved on. And you know what I mean? You're not going to get that cast back. You, it's, there's something special about how well it fit together for what it had to be. And, and I think if you take away the fact that, every movement has an action to it. There's no wasted movement because it's a stage production. And so performers also have to be fucking set designers. You know what I mean? I think if you take that aspect away, you're going to lose what makes it special. I think, I mean, I would watch a movie. They did it just out of curiosity, but I don't see if there's any way that it could be even 90% as good as it is as, as a, as a Broadway play, as a stage play. All right. Uh, you yourself, Mike, are, are ones known to go and read biographies and whatnot. Uh, I'm like a crazy person. 
Um, <laughs> would this be something that would uh, spark your interest in actually going back and reading your, the book? Because it was like, it was based off a book. You're saying, yeah, it's based on the. I think it's called Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, By and R- actually, Ron um, Shev Shernon Shernon Shernon. Yeah, like that. I. I did read the story of uh, how Lin Manuel Miranda like was going on vacation. I think after first writing in the Heights, I, uh, I believe, which is um, makes me want to watch that now. <laughs> makes me want to watch in the Heights so bad. Um, Not the movie they're but, making, but the actual like I want them to film a yeah. stage play like they did this one. I wonder if it even exists. I'm not even sure if they have one. I don't know, um, but. Uh, he he told the story of, and I might be getting some of the details wrong, but I think he like uh, forgot some of his books or something like that going on vacation. And like, this was like a couple week vacation and he wanted to like get some reading done because he's one of those guys. Um, and he like picked it up at the airport. And like, I don't, he wasn't even like super like, like real focused on it. He's like, oh, it might be interesting kind of thing. But he talked about as he was reading it, he was blown away because he didn't know like the story of him as a child and what he had to do um, as a kid. And then like, like I said, the first song of the play kind of gives you his, his childhood story. Like he, he survived this insane storm that hit his Island and killed his mom. Uh, His dad was already out of the picture. He was an orphan. He, he was, he was so smart and so respected on the island that the island pooled money together to send him to the mainland to go to college. Like wow. all that shit's true. And like, yeah, so this is like just knowing like how insane like his, his story was just to get to to New York to, to then start making like American history uh, is pretty interesting. So yeah, I have thought about grabbing the book. Um, and read it. I'm probably going to do it at some point. There was a handy link you just got sent by somebody. Oh, look at that. that. <laughs> With uh, Cody, same question to you. Would this make you want to uh, go back and read the book? I, it does in a way because I, I just, I, in a, like, I'm not really a big person of liking, you know, <laughs> real stuff. Biographies um, and, yeah. Yeah, just, it's just, because a lot of times it's depressing and it's like, Unless it's about murder, and then I'm all in on about it. But uh, it's just like it's true. I mean, there must be something about this this particular biography that grabbed someone so much that they devoted this much time to it. You know what I mean? Like he, like it's it's fucking ridiculous. Like he's he built something. I mean, I say it's been five years since he released it, but it's like obviously he's been working on it way before that because he did like I was trying to remember I just I read something about it while Mike was talking so on vacation in 2008 he read the book and then he did a he wrote a rap about Hamilton that was performed at White House evening of poetry music and spoken word on May 12th of 2009 that then led him to make the musical that debuted um in 2015, but an extended version was released in 2012. Yeah. 2012 of the original poem that he wrote. And then that turned into what then is now the musical or well, Hamilton an American musical is known as in two, that was released in 2015 at none other than off Broadway public theater, mind you. Oh, so this didn't even, didn't even start as a Broadway play. Nope. That's the crazy part too. Is wow. like, I was like, well, Jesus, like that's clearly, obviously, someone liked it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once it yeah. once it got the Broadway green light, like there was some a lot of buzz around it because he basically picked like the best of the best, apparently, of Broadway performers. So like the the lady who played Angelica, um. His was wife. like a lead in that movie. Or not, uh, not his wife. His wife's sister. His wife's sister. Yeah. Who he was kind of in love with. Yeah. Weird. Or deeply in love with. Deeply however. in love with. Um, she was in that Broadway play Rent. She was an original cast of that Rent show. 
Um, the guy who played George Washington, um, like had the role of as Simba in the Lion King play when that like set the world on fire. Um, right. and he'd been around Anthony Robles Jr., the guy who played uh, his son. He was he was just coming off of something that he won a bunch of awards for too. So like like everybody, like all the main people who are in it, like were coming off of like big performances that were very like very um popular, right. I guess. Yeah, yeah like popular. highly highly sought after people. But also so apparently hold on. there's a lot of buzz around it because he got everybody he wanted. Well, and he worked with these people because, like, uh, um, uh, Christopher Jackson, the guy who played George Washington, was in In the Heights. But he was also, he did uh, mus- or, uh, singing roles in Moana. So he's been yeah. working with a handful of these people um, for on several different projects, and it just happens to be that they're, he found people who are amazing, is basically what it comes down to. And it obviously shows because... Well, you know how amazing. And also, it was. like his previous play in the Heights won a bunch of awards too. Yeah. So obviously, it didn't like transcend pop culture the way the way Hamilton did. But in that community, he was looked at like, oh, this guy is is a big deal. Let's let's do what he wants to do, kind of thing. Uh, it was nominated for thirteen Tony Awards, winning four of them, including Best Musical and Best Original Score. It also won the Grammy Award for Best Musical Theater Album uh, and earned a nomination for Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical for Miranda. Cool. I mean, it's pretty... I mean, I always heard a lot of things about it and like I was like excited when they decided they wanted to make the movie out of it, but I, now I'm like... Seeing the production value of Hamilton, I'm like... Mm, is In the Heights going to be like... As good, or could it be as good? That's, that's the funny thing is, is Jen was like, like she was blown away by it too. She was like, I really, really liked it. I was like, yeah, it was like way better than I thought it was gonna be. She's like, I'm worried about watching any other play. I was like, yeah, I feel, I feel like we kind of started at the top and everything's gonna be shit now. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of weird because like I don't know how to judge the next thing I watch. Cause in my head I was like, Holy shit, that was a lot of fun. I should search out some more of this shit stuff, but I couldn't, I'm like, it's not going to be this good. Like if it was this good, people would have been talking about it. The only thing I could think of is like book of Mormon, which, you know, for slightly different reasons, kind of had the same kind of sweep across. Like it started to transcend, transcend just yeah, people who watch plays. Really good. Yeah. 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 And Josh Gad, even I guess after uh, Hamilton uh, dropped on Disney Plus, I guess a bunch of people were bugging Josh Gad, and he was like, uh, "I'll tell you guys, there is a film version of it. They filmed it over a couple nights towards the end of his run, but he's never seen it, and he doesn't know if it's ever been edited together or anything. But there is video of of original cast somewhere." For that one. Um, and then I'm like, well, what what are the other big Broadway plays? Like, I don't even know. Like, obviously, I'm interested in The Heights now because it was Lin-Manuel Miranda. There's and the only other ones I know of are the ones they made movies about, like Rent and Sweeney Todd and fucking Cats. And I don't want to watch opera. Cats. Huh? Phantom of the Opera. Oh, Phantom of the Opera. Phantom yeah. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. But like, yeah. I, can't, I was like, I don't know. I know you can. There's a there's a recorded stage version of Rent you can watch. I know that much. And same thing with Cats. Like this, like the new movie Cats. Judgment aside, uh, I know there's <laughs> there's filmed stage versions of it you can watch. That have you know the stage for the stage is oversized furniture that the cats climb all over and stuff like that. Um, but I know there's like you you it's can so- <laughs> watch Rent. It's it's very dumb. They're not even too perspective because the cats are never that small. Like there's no way they're that small. And the, and the the thing I I as far as I understand isn't cats like the fucking like Justin Bieber or Broadway plays. Like isn't it like people like it, but it's like the people who like Broadway don't use don't like cats kind of thing. Isn't that kind of how it goes? Yeah, yeah. It's more of that. It's it's definitely pop. Yeah, 
It's not it's not high art. Um they've done high art versions of it. Um what was that other one that the the Wizard of Oz one? Wicked. I know there's a uh video version, a stage version of that you can watch too. Which is a huge one. I know what you love flying monkeys, Mike. How'd you know? Uh, cause I know you well. Oh, fair enough. Boom, got him. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, so I was looking up in the Heights. The film version, um, was originally set to release June twenty sixth of this year, but however, to you know certain circumstances of the world, it got delayed till June eighteenth uh, of two thousand twenty one. So if, what, if we're what's still it about? Alone. You mentioned it a bunch of times. I have no idea what it's about. Uh, it's, uh, again, it's something, um, that he wrote based on a book. Um, but the, it tells, it's a uh, real quick, basically, um, it tells the story of, uh, characters living in a Latino neighborhood that take it. The course of the whole story takes place over three days and it's about their okay. lives living in the Heights, which is, um, the name of the area that they live in yeah it's new york right yeah i can't remember what's the actual name it's not normal heights uh must be washington heights right might be it might be washington heights yeah but it's it's all about it's basically um it can't like so a lot of like when you look it up people uh refer to it as the hip-hop version of rent um because it's okay very similar to that kind of uh aesthetic where it's these working class people who are I don't know if, like, in Rent, it's all about these people who go to a school that's um, a uh, performing arts school. This one uh, wrote in the earliest draft of Heights during his sophomore year of college after a show was accepted to uh, Westland University Student Theater Company, Second Stage, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember where. There's all this other stuff in here. But it's all about, I don't, again, I don't know if it's about a working theater school like rent is but it's about young people doing stuff but it's hip-hop i don't know i haven't seen it so i don't know but from what i can read all i know is everyone's like he did so amazing on this and people are like i've never heard of that because we don't ever go see plays because we live in the middle of america and we don't have fancy shit like that (laughs) well in arizona the the closest thing that i know of is you have the uh the auditorium at asu which will host the the traveling one uh like that's that's where hamilton played yeah yeah i know they've done fan of the opera there and uh the lion king there uh gamage auditorium yeah i was gonna say it starts with the g right ASU gamage auditorium yeah and then the phoenix opera phoenix symphony something or other does those things too sometimes like Cody, is this ones? is this gonna make you want to go see stuff live? Like go see more stuff. I used to go see stuff live all the time. Did you? Yeah. What happened? Like, I lived in San Francisco. Like, concert. <laughs> well, no, it's not concerts, but like um, stage productions. Yeah, concert. like I've I saw just here living in Arizona, um, because there's a theater over by uh, um, Joe's work uh, in Peoria. Um, yeah, I've been there. That does. They do plays though. They're they're less musical theater. Oh, behind the target, right? Yeah. Um. Oh, so yeah, I I, I saw yeah, Arizona Broadway Theater. Yeah, I saw um Little Shop of Horrors there. No, I've been there. I actually <laughs> went and saw um uh oh shit what was it um I went there with my mom and my uh, my aunt. I cannot remember the name of the play, but it was really well done. It was yeah. a really good play. It's a really nice theater too. It is. Yeah, but I it's set up much like uh, like you would think a uh, like a stand up comedy is, or at least uh, that's what I remember it as. Where we yeah. sat at a table where we ordered stuff, and yeah, uh, while the play was going on, Le- less of a theater theater, more of like a you know you have these round tables. You're not sitting with your back facing the stage, but there's these rounded no, tables and, and and large yeah. long bench tables and things like that. Um, but living in San Diego, we had the Shakespeare, we had the old Globe Theater. And so right. I've seen a lot of stuff there, a lot of Shakespeare stuff and other plays and stuff put on there, a lot of Edgar Allan Poe stuff um, done there. And then, uh, I mean, I was, obviously I did theater when I was in uh, junior high and high school too. So we went to different Wheeler. things. Uh, yep. Um, 
so we we would go on field trips to go see performances of stuff um and things like that but um anyhow yeah that's i i mean i'm i'm down to go to those i just it's one of those things where like i think it was flash dance no what was the other one dirty dancing dirty dancing you said dirty dancing i was gonna say did you see hairspray they did hairspray for like a long time there i think it was dirty dancing that they did how was patrick swayze in it i don't remember very well amazing (laughs) just like in anything right (laughs) Well, this was back in like 2005, 2006. He was still alive like then. Yeah. Um. No, I mean to to answer. I know personally, I'd be down for doing stuff like that. Yeah, I was going to answer Mike's question. I mean, this does make me kind of want to see it more. But, it'd be fun. but it's one of those things like we get to plan it way ahead because, like, yeah. I mean, the the Hamilton stuff alone, but like when the Book and Mormon. Was coming out. I almost went to go see the one at ASU, um, because a guy from from work was was getting he got t- extra tickets and he was going to sell them, but he wanted to sell them marked up. And I was like, "What's well, fucking a dick move?" It's like I want to yeah. make money on. I'm like, "Well, fuck off. Um, you're an idiot. How would you make no money on them? Yeah, yeah. how would you fucking eat those tickets? Um, but yeah, like I I was really interested in seeing uh, Book of Mormon. Like Mike said, I heard so many things about it, and everyone's like, "It's just the greatest thing ever" because it's like a satire, but it's really, really well written. And I'm like, "These are the guys who made a career of making little kids swear." So yeah, I'm gonna go see it. I mean, come on now. Um, and then of course, when Hamilton was was out and about, I was like, "Well, that seems like something I would like to go see." And then uh, for whatever reason, I never really looked into it. I think at one point, Mike and I were talking about it at one point because him and Jen, you did look into it, right? Yeah, I, and there was. Like a couple of weeks before they showed up, I was all like, and they're going to be here for like a, a couple of weeks or something like that, yeah. doing a bunch of shows. And they were completely sold out, like right off the get go. And this, like I said, weeks before they were even in town. And I was like, it's touring coming. It's not like it's OG cast or anything. I was like, there's going to be tickets available. No, nope. no, nope. I misjudged nope. that shit by a mile. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess not. This is how it's going to be. Fuck you, and I want culture anyways. Yeah. The only kind of culture I'm going to get is from, from yogurt. Um, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Mike's like, what's that? Um, Big Burn Hamilton. Boom. If that is your real name. Um, But yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things where, like, I kind of want to see Wicked. And there was a chance, like I had a chance to go to Vegas and see it when it was there, um, but that didn't really work out. Um, but like I, I mean, a lot of those things I would definitely be down to see. Uh, I just I found out recently they did they're doing they started a, a Beetlejuice musical that just got off the ground right yeah. when the pandemic happened and it got shut down. And I was like, but I want to see that. And I guess it's like didn't they do a Spider Man one that was a goddamn nightmare a few years ago? Yeah, people like died and shit making it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to see that. Spider Man. I was going to ask you guys about is would you watch something like that? Spider Man into the dark, right, or something like that? I don't don't know. I think Bono did the music, right? That was Edge. The wrestler? No, uh, Edge from (laughs) U two. (laughs) <laughs> I don't think he did the music Cody you're fucking dumb <laughs> he's too busy winning world titles um yeah I'm not I'm not cultured uh yeah man I'm cause I've as, as weird as it said when I was like uh like junior high high school and stuff like that um I was really into like like the drama thing and I was like Turn off doing plays and stuff like that and but then like when i left school i was just like ah, okay well that's just done i don't go to those things and, and like it wasn't like nobody i knew went to anything or was into it so i just didn't go to anything and which is funny about how fucked 2020 is is like at the end of last year me and jen had talked to each other like we had this like long conversation about like hey we're not doing a lot of stuff like we should go do more stuff, and she was like, "Yeah, like we we're kind of because work being so busy and like we living out and everything in Buckeye, and it's like a fucking like you have to 
plan a whole day around going to do something. And so we're like, fuck it, let's let's go do more stuff. That's where like the the indie wrestling shows came in. We saw some some ballet stuff because Jen's really into that, and it was fun. Like we saw the Nutcracker during Christmas time. It was a fun time. We enjoyed it, and we're like, yeah, we're doing more stuff. We had ticket, or we almost bought tickets for some stuff in Vegas. Um, Bruno Mars, uh, right? You were gonna go see Bruno yeah, Mars. Yeah, we, we had. We had the days all lined up. I had the rooms and everything. And then, like, everything started getting weird. And so I, I didn't pay for the tickets yet. I was like, I don't know. Like, there's still plenty of tickets available. We're going to hold off for, like, another week before we buy anything. And then, like, four days later, Vegas got shut down. <laughs> so uh, it's funny because, like, we had made that. And we had actually gone, started doing more things. Like, we were doing, like, dinner with family more and then, like, traveling <laughs> to see people. So I feel like our um ambition to try to get out more and do more stuff really fucked the whole world and i want to just apologize to it yeah we your your fucking fault my bad guys my bad thanks i'll Uh, work on it since you guys are into stuff like this have you ever been to hyperion theater in uh california adventures no oh that's the one they put on is that the one they did the uh frozen one at Yes, so they yeah. actually put on actual full uh, plays, really, of their, their movies. I've seen Aladdin there. I've seen Frozen there as well. They're actually really well done. Yeah. Uh, would you guys be interested in doing that next time that we're there? 100%. I, I want to do more shit. I know Jen wants to do more shit. and uh, Now I and, don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'm... I was told I, you yeah, said Jen. I, I want to make a conscious effort to go do more things because like i said i didn't think i was gonna like this and of course i'm not i can't compare anything else we see locally <laughs> to this because it's not it's not gonna be fair what but uh i think it'd be fun then i, I, would, I definitely want to see more live stuff for sure you you don't think a local production is going to spend 12.8 million dollars on a stage production here's the thing i've been to wrestlemania before and i also watched awf <laughs> out of a church and there's slight differences in the the show quality, right? you, like you, not huge. You watched but AWF I'm a big out wrestling of a fan, so I can notice little things. <laughs> you, you watched AWF out of the. So that's a good point. Some of like, the smaller theaters, yeah. like uh, like an Arizona Broadway theater, could be more akin to an independent wrestling show, indie wrestling show, larger stuff. Exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah, so I I know I can't go in there with like you know Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels main event vibes. But I can go in there with fucking Alexander Hammerstone fucking beating up some Nazi dude. Like, that's cool. I can watch that. <laughs> we have, we've watched it before, too. And it was fun. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't <laughs> mania, but it was fun. <laughs> so the Spider-Man um, musical you were at, talking about is called Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. That's right. And it's music and lyrics by Bono and The Edge of mm. U2 fame. Um, and it cost a, it had a budget of seventy five million dollars. Jesus Christ, I that expensive. <laughs> yeah, was, you know that that mm. new Tom Hanks submarine movie that just came out had a budget of forty two million dollars. <laughs> yeah, well, did you hear? Did you hear how much Apple paid for it? Forty three million dollars. And that was like sixty something million. And I guess because of it, they're. Increase in download in in uh, subscriptions to Apple uh, TV Plus is like went up like one hundred and thirty two percent. I know I still intend on watching it. Yeah, me too. Speaking of real quick uh, before we wrap things up because we're about that time, uh, Joe, what did you think of Palm Springs? I liked it. It's fun, right? Is it a show or a movie? Yeah, movie. It's a movie. It's it's literally uh, an hour and twenty nine minutes long. So it's literally like an hour. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, it was super short. I watched it last night with my brother. Uh, Michael, I, watch it in three I thoroughly years. enjoyed it. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't call it like revolutionary or anything, revolutionary or anything. Uh, but it, it took. It takes a, a, a good idea with Groundhog's Day. It tweaks it. It actually tells you how he gets into the loop. Yep. And, uh, and it's just him having fun with it but you realize the fun with it that he's having right now 
is because he's finally succumbed to the fact that he is trapped in this loop and he can never get out. And uh, you find out that, because uh, I was reading a, uh, not to, it's not really a spoiler because they don't really mention it in the, in the show at all, but the writer of it was saying uh, that uh, he's been trapped in this loop for 40 years. Oh, shit. Yeah. So the first like handful of years is him. He, uh, they don't show it, but he's gone crazy. He's done a bunch of fucked up stuff, but by the time we get to the movie, he's just accepted it. And he just lives it every single day, the best that he can, the funnest that he can with, with uh, morals intact. I should say, uh, him and Andy Samberg and the lead actress, actress, I can't remember her name, have fantastic chemistry. The mom from, uh, uh and it's, how I met your mother. Was it? Yeah. I never made it that far into the, into the that one, show. the one that like, died of cancer up until they start, until they started getting to that. And then yeah. it was just like, well, this is stupid. Uh, <laughs> I do think it has a little bit of a pacing problem yeah. because it is only an hour and a half long. It feels like they, they're they having fun with it, and then suddenly it speeds up to a point where they're obviously falling in love with each other, which you'd probably guess by that that's probably going to happen anyway. You're both stuck in a loop, you know, much like uh, uh, what was that uh, Jennifer Lawrence and uh, uh, Passenger. Chris- Passenger, yeah, you know, they're stuck together. You know that they're going to fall in love. It's not a spoiler or anything like that. It's just how fucked up it, uh, it is, uh, especially when Passenger, when you find out that he's, when she finds out that he's the one that's the, the reason why she's stuck there. Uh, but yeah, nothing revolutionary, but fun, funny, uh, and yeah. all around just a, a good movie. And uh, the uh, appearance of... Uh, of uh, J.K. Simmons in it is oh, he's fantastic. fucking awesome. He's fantastic. Where you meet, where you meet him to begin with, with <laughs> him hunting down Andy Sandberg and, and shooting him with a bow and arrow, and then fast forward to when you find out how he got stuck in the loop himself. Yeah, was just fucking crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's very clever in the way they do it, and it's it's a little different than the Groundhog's Day because like. There's a, a, a an actual f- physical thing that starts the loop, um, and other people can be drug into it. But uh, yeah, because at one point I didn't see anything about the director saying that, or the writer saying about forty years. But there's a part in it where you realize like he's done this so many times that it's ridiculous because it's like he talks about how like every time she brings up something like oh this, he's like nope, did that ended badly. You know, he's like, and then like, uh, the, the rules they set up in it are, are easy to kind of follow along, but then like they use that as setups for different jokes and stuff in it. Like the fact that like he took a week to die in the hospital at one point. Yeah. Which was actually another really cool thing. A, a, a tw- little bit of a twist on, well, definitely a twist on Groundhog's Day thing is that the, the rules set up were really solid and really simple. Like you said. And in that instance right there, he said, as long as you don't fall asleep or die, you can continue living. But as soon as you fall asleep or die, you are transported back to the beginning of the day that you were sent into the loop. So even at one point where she first uh, enters the loop and is like, no, you're crazy. I'm going to drive away. She (laughs) she drives away, makes it all the way to Texas, Texas, makes it all the way to the next day, falls asleep on a couch in a hotel room, and wakes up back in the bed that she was in the day that she entered the loop. So it's really cool rule that, uh, that they established there. There's some weird stuff that goes on too, like stuff they see in the desert. I don't want to ruin it for Mike. You know what I'm talking about, Joe? <laughs> I was like, yeah. uh, what? Um, but then it's like the, it's not just like the movie is obviously not just about the loop itself, but the, who, who they are and what they are doing in that, like when they're in that loop, and like her story is like super crazy. I thought like, I thought it was a really fun way. Like not a fun one. It's not fun. What she goes through, but it's an interesting way of throwing a kink into it because it's the way the trailer makes you think it's all about Andy Samberg, but really it's about both of them and actually more about her than just him. So I thought that was right. pretty cool. But anyhow, I think that'll do it for tonight. Fellas. 
Okay. Unless okay. you all got something else to throw at us. And none. All right. Well, well. Uh, comes naturally. We are. Yo. Mike. And I am Cody. And as usual, you fuckers just came naturally. Mwah. Gross.